what happens in movies or TV that seems to be normal and you think to yourself that is not what people in real life do. Whenever a simple miscommunication happens, no ever stops and clarifies with the other person. Like if one 10 second conversation can derail an entire plot thread I'm not interested. Guy, wait, it's not what it looks like. I can explain. Doesn't explain. Girl, just forget it. Daniel, proceeds to storm off and spends the rest of the movie sulking. Women can be in the jungle for weeks, and they don't have hair growing anywhere. Men immediately begin to grow a beard, and that beard looks perfectly managed and not like some high school scraggly attempt at a beard. Hitting someone on the head with a whiskey bottle to knock them out, pretty high risk of killing them. Person goes to the toilets to throw up, or maybe they were coughing up blood. Do they rinse out their mouth like normal people? No. They wash their face and suddenly everything is okay? School bus is honking and waiting for kids that are still in the house. If I wasn't at the bus stop when the bus arrived, it would drive on by. It didn't stop. It didn't honk. It didn't wait. I've had buses drive on by when there were people at the bus stop. No one using a computer ever uses a mouse. It's just constant. Frantic typing. Lol yay. You see someone working and fear just seemingly typing down a 50 page document completely from memory without pausing for even a second. Car gets hit. Scratched. Rolled. Goes off a cliff. In a car accident. It blows up. Everyone has one paper bag for groceries. And it has a celery stalk and loaf of French bread sticking out the top. And some round fruits just under the top so they call roll about when something goes wrong. Person walking home from the store with grocery bag, all happy and stuff. Shot fired. Camera shifts to random vegetable rolling across the sidewalk so you know the person is dead. The reason you have to put a celery stalk or a baguette sticking out of the top of a grocery bag is because if you don't have groceries sticking out the top of the bag people watching the show get distracted by the bag wondering what's in it and how it's important to the plot. If you have a baguette or something sticking out the top the audience realizes oh that bag is full of groceries and ignores it for the rest of the scene. I just imagined a whole play that features a grocery bag, and it's passed around between actors nonchalantly. None of the actors acknowledge what's in the bag or make any mention of it. It just leaves the audience focused on guessing how it relates to the plot or what's in it. Dreaming of kissing a beautiful woman, but actually you're just being licked by a refining animal. Having highly confidential conversations about 4 foot away from the people they are talking about, and not being overheard. Hey, I know we're in a diner in Brooklyn, and there's about 30 other people here, but I need you to commit first degree murder on someone. In fairness to Hollywood, Jurassic Park made reference to this and it's still a meme 28 years later. When they knock on the door or ring the doorbell and someone opens it within 2 seconds. I'd sit there for 30 seconds minimum trying to figure out why someone is at my house before I would even contemplate opening the door. Yep. Someone knocks on my door and I just sit there thinking did I order anything? I stole altered a line from Buffy once when there was a knock at my door. Who's knocking? Everyone I know lives here. Guessing the passwords of other people correctly. I can't even guess my own passwords correctly. At this point there are some sites with stupid password restrictions. Must have two numbers, a special character, and can't be one of your last 340 passwords that I've given up. I enter random gibberish and each time I need the site I just use the password reset feature. Password. HMM. Nope. Password 1. Drat. Password quitty. Alright I'm in the FBI mainframe. Let's try guest. Access granted. No way. That is just. Babby town frolic. When they are playing video games and just turn off the TV. Lol. They didn't save three times. Total BS. Lol. When women run around in heels with perfect hair and makeup, and the dirt and sweat makes their hair and makeup look even better. Looking at you, Jurassic World. My go-to on that is Megan Fox in the second Transformers movie. She's running around caves in the desert and never gets a speck of dirt on her white tank top and white pants. On the phone making plans. Okay, meet me at 5, sure. And that's the whole plan. Where are you meeting? Planning to meet someone in a public place never goes this smoothly, or just dinner tonight, and not even specifying the time, see you somewhere at some time, bye, or when someone asks someone they just met on a date sure, pick me up at 5 inches, first of all where, 
their house, how do you know where they live already? You guys just met, yeah or setting up a date with someone you just met like it's a date and then they leave, no number or address exchanged, no talk about where you're meeting and when. SNL did a pretty funny sketch about this with Kristen Stewart and Pete Davidson. Putting baby in a playpen when your friend visits and said baby doesn't scream, I'm in general. Parents with a newborn baby that never seems to need any attention, milk, diaper changes, doctor visits, etc. The parents are totally free to live their life normally. Girl vomiting pregnant, someone hiccups drunk, someone coughing seriously ill, fainting cancer, leaving a voicemail that finishes with I love you that character dies in the next scene. On TV house parties where everyone is evenly spread out throughout the house having one-on-one -on -one conversations while generic techno plays in the background. One thing that drives me berserk in movies is when someone is driving and talking to their passenger. They refuse to keep their eyes on the road and insist on making prolonged eye contact with the person next to them. In the movies this often means a jump scare car crash is about to happen. I'd like to say that's unrealistic but my mom used to drive that way all the time. I hated going anywhere with her. This fills me with unease even when I know for a fact that they are not going to crash. I find myself saying out loud, look at the road, look at the damn road, ah. 10 solid seconds of eye contact with the passenger as they talk, the Sopranos was bad about that. Soldiers running towards the enemy instead of hanging back and setting up suppressing fire. I've also read that pretty much nobody actually charges towards the enemy in a last ditch effort. Because as I understand it, most people don't actually want to die. Most armies were historically defeated while rooting. Akka trying to retreat. Tons of people will say F this and turn around if things start going very badly. Every time anyone sneezes people assume they're sick. Like don't they ever get random sneezes. Whenever a woman gets inexplicably sick or has an explanation she plays up too much she's pregnant. TV is so transparent about it. Don't forget when she has the baby too. It's always a sudden intense painful labor that is started by her water breaking. And hijinks ensues as she's whisked off to the hospital where she can't get any kind of pain relief and lots of screaming and comedy relief moments occur. Same with nosebleeds. It means something awful or they've done a bunch of coke. I've had random fi nosebleeds my entire life. I don't have cancer and have never tried coke. I've had random fi nosebleeds my entire life. I don't have cancer and have never tried coke. Do you have special mind powers? Could be that. My nose bleeds whenever the air gets dry. I usually get several of them when the seasons change. They used to bother me. Now I just get annoyed with them. Someone coughing? Can pretty much guarantee you that person has lung cancer. Or if it's a historical movie. TB. But for that one they have to dramatically cough into a handkerchief and then reveal blood in it. People just firing guns with no hearing protection without becoming deaf. My dad talks about this one a lot especially when there's a big fight scene where the person is just blasting away. My dad's always like their ears should be ringing and they shouldn't be able to hear anything. When they fire a weapon in a car and everyone is like men BD. Well, then you just screw on a silencer and the gun will go PFT. No, it won't. Archer is really good at correcting this. Young singles living in million dollar condos that overlook the city, and none of them work full time hours, maybe 2 hours tops per week, I have a top floor city view working less than that, I mean, it's a tent on a rooftop, but I could totally afford it if the birds would just stop taking my food. Look in the rear view mirror and shuffle the wheel from side to side as much as they do looking at you Leonard. In horror movies, everyone runs upstairs. If there was something chasing you wouldn't head for the door to get outside, also you're creeped out in the house but you never turn on the light, also their ability to sleep peacefully at night after experiencing paranormal activity in the house. I can't sleep peacefully after watching a movie about paranormal activity and they can just curl up and go to sleep after their effing TV was floating, F out of here lol. Getting hit over the head and knocked out then just waking up later on and acting like they just have a small hangover. And anyone can be instantly knocked out cold by hitting them with a bit of a gun to the back of the head. Yeah, this is what I don't like. It gives all sorts of false confidence. What are you going to do when you hit someone over the head and it just starts bleeding and they are still coming after you? Knocked out. Thrown into a car. Driven who knows how long. Dragged into a warehouse. Sat in a chair. 
tied to the chair and then waiting who knows how long for them to wake up. Yeah, they ain't waking up if it's been that long. I always think the same thing, that dude's in a coma. In boxing and MMA etc dudes get knocked out for like 3 seconds and it's already seems super bad for them. It's the worst when people do it to their friends loved ones. Knock them out to keep them from doing something dangerous no friend. Don't go on that mission. Stay here and have permanent brain damage instead. I can actually see this being realistic though. People watch too many movies and end up thinking that knocking out someone is fine lol. Along that same line. It used to be a comedy trope that getting bonked on the head would cause amnesia or some other comical altered mental state. Of course, a specifically engineered second bonk on the head would reverse the trouble. Like repeated traumatic brain injury was more of a toggle than cumulative effect. Find a parking spot right in front of their building, and an empty table in a crowded cafe, or an empty couch in the middle of Central Perk. When you're tailing someone, they park. And there's just a spot right there for you to immediately park an appropriate distance away. Wake up at 6am no matter what time of year and it is bright and sunny. Hurry or you'll miss the bus as it's clearly noon outside. Takes a bite out of a high effort breakfast their mom made and then just leaves. Go to bed wearing full makeup. Waking up with full makeup still perfectly applied. And one strand of hair slightly higher up just to remind you they've totally just been asleep for 8 hours matching their hair on their pillow. I love marvelous MRS. My Zul for waking up 20 minutes before her husband so she can do her makeup. Then getting back into bed and opening the blinds so he wakes up and she can pretend they're waking up together. There's a scene in marvelous M's. My Zul that does this pretty well. She goes to bed in full makeup for her husband and then it shows her actual night routine. Including waking up early so she can put it all back on for him. My grandma has been married to my grandpa for like 40 years and she still does this exact routine. He has never seen her without a full face of makeup. It's so bonkers to me. I can't imagine living like that. Being a young, aspiring artist writer actor living alone in a nice, spacious apartment in a prime area of a big city like New York or LA. F.I.ing Zootopia got it right. For God's sake. Tiny, shta apartment with paper walls and neighbors who scream all night. In Ratatouille, Alfredo had a shta apartment, with a perfect view of the Eiffel Tower of course. Ted quit his job as an architect. Lily is a kindergarten teacher and Marshall is in law school. But not a single word about how they pay for their massive two-bedroom apt in Manhattan. They actually mention that the apartment is rent-controlled a couple times. Albeit rent controlled by the writers so they can afford it. Answers phone. Hello. Listens to the caller for one second. What do you mean Tim got kidnapped by a drug cartel while he was shopping with his family in his trip to South America? Dials 911. Yeah, hello. 911? No. That's normal. That's how you let 911 know you're on Reddit. Hand someone a burner phone. Keep this on you day and night. It rings. You better answer. Okay. Do you have the charger? The what? This phone. Did it come with a charger? It's not USB. It has one of those cylindrical ports. Like on an old Nokia. Look pal. Hey. You're the one giving out phones. It's charged now. How did you charge it? To be fair those old phones had like a week of standby time on the battery. But your point is still valid. Talking without the use of filler words. The only time I recall hearing such usage is when a character is meant to be awkward, stumbling etc. Rather than being a typical factor of speech, I write fiction and it's harder to portray a natural conversation in the written form but movies television have an easier time. I try to write in pauses, ums, likes, and other discourse markers without making it super awkward to read because it annoys me in movies lol. system hacked. I'm doing something. My visiting sister comes out of the shower in a towel. Just as my wife, who has never seen my sister, comes home. I scream I can explain. Then stay silent and guilty looking. The amount of ultimatums in romantic movies is appalling. No real relationship can last if you're at the point of an ultimatum. You're just putting a dysfunctional relationship on life support for another week or two. People don't stop doing stupid sh they just learn to hide it from you better. Or the whole girl sees guy the second a co-worker unexpectedly comes on to him. I'm breaking up with you. I saw you. No wait let me explain. If you'll just sit down. 
I'll explain exactly what it was that happened, because there is a totally reasonable explanation, so if you'll just hold on I'll totally explain. Nice try Mark, hope she's worth it, no Stacy please, if you'll just let me explain, you see it wasn't what it looked like, at all. Please Stacy don't go, hear me out, it wasn't what you thought, Stacy leaves. Guy looks exasperated as if he wasn't given a chance to explain and resigns that he'll never have a chance to end a call and hang up the phone without saying goodbye. I work with a guy who does this. When he's done with the conversation he hangs up. I don't know how many time he's left me on the line talking to myself. Nice. Power move tip hang up before he hangs up. People opening the oven only to be surprised and oh no to a completely black roast turkey meat of some kind and then have smoke just blowing out of the oven. No, one it takes a while to do that much damage to meat, not like 5 minutes, like IDK unless you are broiling your turkey at 280C slash 550F for some ungodly reason. 2 you'll see smoke coming out before you open the oven. 3 seriously how do you overcook something that badly? Stop it, it takes so much effort to be that bad at cooking, just no. If dinner is at 6 p.m. and it's now 610 or 615, your dish won't be black and smoky and inedible. Maybe it'll suck and taste worse but it won't be black as sh. Stop this nonsense. The cookbook said to clean the turkey. The oven had a clean button. Be a struggling writer while living in a multi-million dollar mansion. That one always puzzles me. Or, a family moves into an expensive house, but neither parent has a job lined up yet. Yeah, how'd that loan approval process go? You frauds? You can't tell me they could all pay cash. I sort of want a movie where they move into a nice house that's cheap because it's horribly haunted. But the family doesn't give a sh because real estate is effing insane these days. They have people over and stuff is flying off shelves. And they're just like yeah, that's George. He died here 50 years ago and still thinks the house is his but we got a great deal on the place so it's fine. This is kind of like all the HGTV shows, I'm a barista and my wife is a kindergarten teacher. Our house budget is 1.5 million dollars. I'm a goat psychologist and my husband is a vexillologist. We have no children, but want at least 5 bedrooms and 4 acres. Walking distance to subway. Worst thing is they're all staged and the couple already bought a house. Come over to a friend's place. Stay there for all of 30 seconds to talk about something plot relevant. And then just leave right away. In the show Working Moms, there's an office meeting where people sit down, do the jokes and plot points, and then adjourn the meeting. At no point do they talk about anything related to work. What was the meeting for? My team has daily meetings. We don't always need daily meetings. My boss likes to try his comedy out for us, right? Saying goodbye takes at least 30 minutes. Eater. Don't know why I didn't think of this sooner. Not from the Midwest, lived on the East Coast my whole life, as have my parents. I hate trying to leave somewhere with my wife. Instantly starts a whole new conversation with who we're visiting and I get to sit in the car with the door open, pretending to give a sh about the roses, or some crap, for 20 minutes. Taking turns talking, like in cop shows when one cop begins an explanation. Then the next one picks up the story at a seamlessly convenient spot, then the third adds but, and throws in some more. No one in real life has ever talked like that. This is a direct call out to criminal minds. I think, the way they do this is criminally bad. Hotch, we're looking for a white male, Garcia, in his mid 40s. Morgan, he suffers from severe paranoid delusions. JJ, and believes his victims are his mother who tortured him and forced him to wear a potato sack over his head while railing coke on the edge of a 42 story building. Yeah, one time couldn't it be like, Hotch, we're looking for a white male, Garcia, in his mid, Morgan, he suffers, Morgan, sorry, I thought it was my turn, Garcia, no sorry, I didn't mean to talk over you, Morgan, go on baby girl, you go, Garcia, no no, I insist, you go, Spencer, okay, I'll go, Morgan Garcia, shut up Spence, Right it more resembles that scene in Jurassic Park 2 where right after they find Malcolm's daughter in the truck and there's three conversation going on at once. I thought about that scene too. I just imagined a guy working on the subtitles crying haha. <laughs> High school bullies in movies. Bullies are way more subtle than that. 
When people in the movies or TV are on a phone call, the pauses where the other person saying something are always so short that they barely have time to say two words, like, that's not how it works. They remove the headrests from cars so you can see the actors better. The endless pistol mag. Wearing shoes on their other's beds, like who actually does that? It's literally just to eliminate the 20 seconds it would take them to take off tie their shoes to QCT like normal people. Here's a strange one. Pay attention to how the actors hold their beverages, especially coffee cups. Often it's pretty obvious that they are empty as they fling it around carelessly without anything spilling. One turning on a shower and jumping right in without checking the water temperature with your hand first. Lawyers walking up to the jury box to talk to the jurors or into the well without permission from the judge. The bailiff will tackle you. Doctors performing surgery without safety glasses. Scenes where someone is painting something, like a wall or a chair, wearing nice clothing, with no tape, coverings, or paint splatter anywhere. Everyone and their mothers drink scotch, and like it. After sex, the couple just gets dressed or lays in bed for the night. The woman would be leaking, and if the guy is wearing a condom wouldn't they want to take it off before going to bed or getting dressed? Eating a few bites of your food, then get some and buy someone for something or leave, it does not work like that FFS, nobody wastes food so abundantly. Surgery done in dimly lit operating rooms, why would you not want to be able to see what you are doing clearly? The stupid slow motion kiss or hug as the world is falling apart, I'm like F I go. You can do all that schlater. Preparing a huge 5 star breakfast, pancakes, waffles, fruit, biscuits, oatmeal, omelette, etc. That no one eats. I don't even understand why that's a thing in movies and TV shows. Sorry honey, I'm running late. And then takes a sip of coffee and holds a piece of toast with his mouth while running out the door with a suitcase. Also you gotta have a teenager of the family eating a bowl of cereal while there's literally pancakes. Waffle, biscuits, omelette and a filet mignon on the table. If there was that food on the table, anyone in my family would be like F school. Imma read this first. In movies, it seems like architects are overrepresented as a profession by like 1000% and yet there are very few movies about architects. I've never known an architect but they are everywhere in Hollywood productions. Keanu Reeves is an architect in The Lake House. Woody Harrelson is an architect in Indecent Proposal. Adam Sandler is an architect in Click, and on and on and on. Charles Brunson is an architect in Death Wish, for F's sake. Giant breakfast made by mom that looks like it took 4 hours to make. Every one side down for 1 second. Takes a bite and then leaves. The dad comes through, grabs a piece of toast and puts it in his mouth. Then runs out putting his jacket on. The kids are halfway through their cereal when the school bus arrives. And they are rushed out the door. None of the cornucopia of food is eaten. Instantly drying. Even though they just jumped into water fully clothed. Also getting super dirty. However, it magically disappears in the next scene. Always talking all clever and witty. Without us stuttering. Or um. Pausing to think about what you're going to say. Or never forgetting what you were about to say. What else was I going to say? I forgot. There are only two movies with realistic dialogue, Napoleon Dynamite and The Big Lebowski. That's just, like, your opinion man.